Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this conversation on the working hand-in-hand -hand and for cohesion in the new uh, European research area. Nicola De Michelis is my name, and I'm director in DG Regio. The session today is very much a follow-up of uh, uh, yesterday's discussion on innovation cohesion, which discussed uh, the need to address the innovation divide in Europe. And at the center of that conversation was very much the question of uh, promoting innovation and, uh, and uh, uh, research and innovation excellence in Europe can be strengthened by reinforcing the synergies between the different EU instruments. And strengthening those synergies has been very much at the core of the uh, uh, work of the Commission over the past few years. And cohesion policy, the new cohesion policy and the new Horizon Europe offer a range of new opportunities to strengthen these, uh, uh, these, uh, these synergies. And we are at a crucial moment when we are starting the conversation with member states, with regions on the new programming period. So today we'll discuss with a number of, uh, of guests uh, these, these issues. And uh, uh, today they join me here on, on this platform in person, uh, Signe Razzo, who is the Deputy Director General of DG, of DG Research. We also have uh, on uh, a connection uh, remotely, uh, the uh, Normund Poppens, who is the Deputy Director General of DG Regio. Uh, we have uh, also uh, Christophe Clergeau, member of the Regional Council of Pays de la Loire in France and member of the Committee of the Regions. Uh, we have uh, the uh, Czech uh, Deputy uh, Minister for Higher Education, Science and Research, uh, Pavel Dolisek. And finally, we have the uh, rector of the uh, Masaryk University, Martin Barres. So uh, thank, you, thank you all in, in, in advance for, for your participation to this discussion. Um, I would like to invite uh, participants to uh, ask your question in Slido. We will come back to your questions toward the end of this, of this debate. And uh, if you're all ready, I would start asking the first question uh, to uh, the Deputy Director General of DG Research. So, Signe, we hear that uh, about synergy since many years. And what do you expect synergies to produce? And what is different today compared to the past? Signe. Uh, well, many thanks, Nicola, for this very kind introduction. As I was chairing uh, the, the session yesterday, uh, uh, particularly discussing uh, not the innovation divide, but what I'd like to call innovation cohesion. So it's my great pleasure now also to attend this session today and really discuss uh, what we can do in order to create better synergies between our different programs. Uh, certainly, synergies itself uh, is not uh, an, end in, in, uh, an end in itself. For research innovation support, Horizon Europe and uh, cohesion policy programs are key funding sources. Uh, despite the specific objectives, different interventions, they share the same EU objectives, such as helping to accelerate the twin green and digital transitions and associated transformation of our economy, industry and society in all member states, in all regions. Now, in order to achieve these common goals, we really need to strengthen the synergies uh, between the different programs so that they really uh, uh, work together uh, better. Uh, therefore, this is one of the main objectives also in our next program, uh, programming period starting this year. Now, when you asked also the question, what is now different as compared uh, to the past, I'd like to give you a few concrete examples uh, in order to illustrate that. Uh, what is a novelty in, is that a future, in the future, a member state can request a transfer of up to 5% of their cohesion program resources to Horizon Europe. And such a transfer can offer added value uh, where it is directed towards research and innovation areas and topics which were identified as priorities either at a national or regional level 
why the SWOT spe specialization strategies on the one hand and which are then uh, heavily subscribed in uh, horizon calls on the other hand. And in these cases, these voluntary transfers offer the perspective to strengthen the participation in Horizon Europe, uh, particularly for beneficiaries uh, from less developed regions, which traditionally have lower participation and lower success rates. So it can boost the available Horizon budget in order to support excellent proposals. And particularly in these areas, as I said, which have been hi highlighted in smart specialization. Now, the second novelty is simplified implementation of the seal of excellence. Seal of excellence uh, is not a new notion. Uh, now, what is new is that uh, really under Horizon Europe, excellent uh, project proposals, which have already passed the rigorous evaluation pro uh, process in Horizon, but could not be retained because the budgetary resources couldn't allow it, uh, now they can continue to receive the seal of excellence. Uh, but then an application of an ERDF program certainly might offer an alternative uh, avenue towards receiving financial uh, support. Uh, now in turn, member states and regions can easily also identify and support their excellent programs uh, from SMEs in their regions. So what is now new is that under the new rules, the implementation of the seal of excellence is simplified. Uh, cohesion policy authorities can make full use of Horizon Europe selection procedure and apply the same eligible costs and also maximum funding rates while benefiting from state aid simplification. And this was something which has been uh, asked for uh, from the beneficiaries, from the uh, member states for a long time. Uh, and finally, the new opportunity will arise under Horizon Europe partnerships, because the new legislation allows the possibility uh, to use, to co-finance participation in Horizon Europe uh, partnerships using ERDF funds. Uh, and certainly, this is an additional contribution to transnational collaboration. Signe, thank you very much. I, I'm now turning to Normand. Um, uh, Normand um, and, and Signe make, made reference to it. Um, often when talking about the synergies between these two policies, some people mention that the bottom-up place-based approach of cohesion policy is a thought, maybe incompatible, with the top-down excellence-based approach of Horizon Europe. Is it true? Good morning, Nicola, Signe. Good morning, everybody online listening to us. I find it so weird to receive such a question from you, Nicola, because I, I think we both know the answer. Of course, it is not true. Um, the, the two programs, Horizon and our cohesion policy programs, they are, of course, not contradictory. They, are, they should not even be reconciled. They should just work together. They are complementary by nature. And this is how I want to make my pitch. I'm very happy to hear from Signe and our colleagues in RTD how they see the future uh, complementarity. And I agree that the new elements in the regulatory framework such as transfers and seal of excellency are excellent. And we have worked together to make sure that for you final beneficiaries, it is simple if you get your project sealed by this excellent Horizon program, that you can fund it easy from ERDF funds, uh, from cohesion policy funds. And also that, that fact that um, you know, you can make a small transfer to Horizon Europe program to top up your efforts under the cohesion policy programs. But I want to talk about the other part of this complementarity. And that is the fact that uh, we, our main goal from cohesion policy programs is, of course, to uh, help to us to deal with regional disparities and bridge the gaps between the different level in different regions. And there we do see that investment into the field of innovation and research is one of the key elements or key investments that can help us to reduce these disparities. 
And there we see the Horizon program. Of course, now we are discussing, we are co-creating with our colleagues and with all of you, this how we can bridge this gap or, or reduce the gap uh, in, in the cohesion, um, in, in this innovation gap in different parts of Europe. Um, so widening of this excellence in principle. But I think uh, what the cohesion policy has been doing already in 1420 really is helping all regions and everybody to define the starting point to actually start uh, this staircase to excellence. And also, to, we all know that innovative economies and innovative regions uh, sustain, they, they are developing faster, uh, they sustain better the crisis, they are more resilient, they are more sustainable. And this is why, of course, for us, also for the future period, investment under this policy objective on smart growth is part of thematic concentration. It will cover all regions in the European Union and all our programs will invest in this. But there, I think our key approach still remains this joint definition under the concept of a smart specialization strategy, the definition of the potential of a concrete territory of uh, Europe uh, how they want to actually um, agree on what is a priority for investment for the field in innovation and research, and that they together then with different stakeholders start this work, and they define these priorities, and then the funding from this program, from ERDF, from cohesion policy, can also help them to channel this investment, to actually have this investment, and also potentially build that staircase uh, to the excellency principle, and to actually having common projects uh, under Horizon Europe program. So again, I believe that both funding streams uh, will uh, work better together in the future funding period. Uh, we also, it's not only about money and cohesion policy, I think it's also about helping regions to define what are the gaps in their innovation ecosystems and trying to agree together what needs to be done also in terms of legislation, in terms of different other measures, not just funding, because we all know that funding is not really the answer to everything. Uh, it has to go hand in hand with improving the necessary preconditions for such funding. So we are talking about the full use of key enabling conditions uh, under our programs. And we are also talking about filling in different gaps in terms of partnership and working together, uh, which is one of the key principles for the cohesion policy programs. And that means we need to make sure that this partnership principle also will be discussed in uh, uh, investment in the field of innovation and research is really then um, taken on board fully. Um, so uh, by saying that, uh, I want to conclude that we are at a very important phase and I'm very happy to see that today we will also hear evidence from uh, the, the, some countries and regions which have already used these complementarities and synergies and uh, that actually um, we can build on this experience that we already have. And certainly, uh, we, we think that the new um, multi-annual financial period provides us with, with greater opportunities to make sure that all these instruments work for the benefits of every region and citizen in Europe. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Norman. So no contradiction. The instruments are there, but is this enough? And I would like uh, now to turn to Christophe Clergeau, member of the Committee of the Regions. You heard yesterday uh, uh, at the key uh, KEP event that many initiatives have been put in place to favor the participation of regions and local authorities in the European research area and the horizon Europe. You heard the, 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 the efforts that the two uh, departments of the Commission are putting to, to favor these synergies. What do you think? Um, how are regions getting ready to use these possibilities and what can be done to help them? Please. Thank you. Good, good morning to, to everybody and thanks for the invitation. Uh, regions and cities are key actors for research and innovation and regions are in many countries uh, managing authorities. So our point of view and our role is, role is very uh, important. Perhaps first of all, uh, before talking about a transfer of polling money, we should ask what for. And then we absolutely need a new mindset and a full recognition of bottom-up and place-based approach of excellent science and effectively. 
there is no contradiction. Everybody should recognize that breakthrough, disruption in science and innovation do not come only from large uh, European programs, but also from uh, regional ecosystems of innovation, initiative and dynamics. So how can we concretely do that? First, yes, we can transfer money or pooling money uh, to finance uh, more projects in Horizon Europe calls uh, as a sea of excellence. It is useful, but we think it's not so fruitful. The second way to act is to co-fund, co-finance European Europe excellent bottom-up projects set up by consortia of regional ecosystems of innovation. And it's possible, as it has been said, in partnership, but not only, because co-funded uh, tool, regulatory tool in Horizon Europe is also available in mission, but it's also available across all parts of uh, Pillar 2 and Pillar 2 uh, clusters. So we need to share this culture of co-design or co-funded actions in uh, Horizon Europe at the core of uh, Horizon Europe. And finally, the third way is perhaps to explore the potential of ERA hubs. It's a new concept, but it can be a very useful one. What's for? Uh, to strengthen strategic capacity and policy coordination at uh, local and regional level, to combine a local answer to local need of innovation, smart specialization, and contribution to a European excellence in science but also to pull resources to reinforce uh, capacity, research infrastructures, connection between regional ecosystems and European programs, and interconnection between uh, regions and uh, capacity to develop trans-regional cooperation and trans-regional uh, projects. So it's for us very important uh, to underline these aspects uh, the utility of uh, innovation investment uh, tool and the importance of this capacity building uh, to tackle innovation uh, divide. And last element, era hubs can be a very important uh, project factories uh, to address new projects, a uh, new kind of projects to uh, Horizon Europe, projects which should be co-funded between regions and Horizon Europe, but across all parts of Horizon Europe, all tools and all clusters of Horizon Europe and Pillar 2. Thank you. Monsieur Claire Jo, merci beaucoup. Um, you uh, pointed to the fact that uh, it's important to have the mechanics in place, but you also need the strategy. You need to ask what for. And this is uh, the, the question I would like to, to ask the Deputy Minister for Higher Education, Science and Research, Mr. Dolisek. Uh, the post-2020 uh, legislation offers new opportunities to make these synergies between Horizon and other EU policy a reality. But is enough to have solid rules in place to get synergies to work? Uh, you seem to have adopted in, 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 in Czechia a more strategic approach to synergies, which brought important results. And so what is your experience, your advice from a member state perspective to create and foster in connection, exchange knowledge, and practices among the, var the various authorities that deals with this, with this policy. What are your success factors? Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to take a part on this debate. And I would also like to congratulate you for organizing this year's series of uh, Europe uh, European uh, Research and Innovation Days, uh, given the circumstances that we are facing. Now, uh, as you mentioned, uh, a couple of years ago in, in Czechia, we decided to take a more conceptual and strategic approach uh, to the synergies mainly between uh, the EU framework programs and uh, cohesion policy, but also state budgets, and I will talk more about it later. Uh, but uh, now we have some valuable results and enriching experience, and uh, when we uh, went that road, we obviously wanted, on one hand, to bring the added value, excellence, uh, trying to bridging the innovation gap uh, between countries in Europe on one hand, and on the, on the other one, we wanted that our approach is fit to the research and innovation landscape that we have in Czechia. I would like to mention three, three uh, examples, what we did and what we think uh, 
is happening right now and uh, what is very valuable uh, for Czechia, uh, but also for Europe uh, as such. The first tool that I wanted to mention uh, and focus on is the teaming one. Uh, so the so so the instrument aiming for the underperforming country to, to partner and collaborate with with uh, leading research institution uh, in the Europe, and uh, we did that using using both the EU framework program and the cohesion policy. And we have some splendid results, and importantly, uh, that the enhancement uh, of those uh, all existing facility and maybe uh, establishing the new one is, is now uh, really relevant, and it helps uh, progressive positioning uh, on the national level for this institution, but also on the international level. I'm very glad that, uh, for example, uh, Martin Barish, as a rector of the Progressive Masaryk University, is here today uh, because teaming uh, pro projects uh, is important for Masaryk University and is very progressive and successful in, the, in that manner. Uh, the, the second instrument is already mentioned, Seal of Excellence. Uh, I think there is no need for introduction uh, what it's for. Uh, but we feel that uh, it's necessary to use it uh, directly and specifically uh, on some uh, agendas in research innovation. So we are using mainly uh, the cohesion policy to, to co-fund the Seal of Excellence projects uh, in Marie Sklodowska Actions, uh, individual fellowships, which is very important. But also, uh, and, and this is some bridge to my third point, is that uh, we feel that the synergy is not just about the EU framework programs and cohesion policy, but also, uh, well, also with the state budgets, which is a very important point uh, that should be taken uh, as a lessons learned uh, from our experience. Uh, and the third one, the third point is the funding of research infrastructures. Uh, we are using the, the, the state budget for the operational costs and uh, for the capital investments, uh, we are using the cohesion policy. But obviously, uh, we are also using the incentives of EU framework programs uh, for deepening and strengthening the international cooperation. And uh, this positioning and networking is extremely important. And we see that our institutions are now uh, being part of forming of, uh, for example, ERIC consortia, which is very important. So you can see that you have uh, three main streams of budget and you can put them together uh, in a conceptual and strict, uh, strategic manner and the added value is, is without a doubt, I would say, at this point. Uh, that being said, uh, and coming back to Seal of Excellence concept, uh, we also use state budget for a Seal of Excellence concept for uh, EIC and ERC projects. So uh, you can see that in Czech Republic, uh, we wanted to fit in uh, our landscape, but also uh, to be very precise in uh, bridging the gap, uh, bridging the innovation gap between countries, uh, added value and bringing the excellence towards Czechia. Uh, it also gives us opportunity to uh, let's say, balance the bottom-up and top-down approach and bring together all sort of stakeholders uh, with the debates how to, how to set up uh, this whole uh, establishment. So uh, the lessons learned, uh, I would say that uh, when we are discussing uh, funding research, innovation, technology in Europe in years to come, I would say that the balance synergies between those two streams, I mean, EU framework program and cohesion policy, but also state budget is a must have. Uh, the efficient application of those synergies uh, avoids duplication. Uh, it also prevents cross-funding. And I would say that the remarkable spillover effects uh, are quite visible, especially in Czech Republic. Uh, that being said, obviously, what is, ne what is necessary and what is uh, desperately needed uh, is a synergy-friendly rules and complementary uh, regulatory framework. So, I mean, the, the whole procedures that is being set up for implementing uh, those, those tools. Uh, just, to, just to end my intervention, uh, Czech Republic uh, would, be, uh, would be holding the Czech presidency in the EU Council uh, in the second part of 2022, and synergies is one of our main topics uh, for the time. So, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. And uh, you basically said that it is possible to combine the different, the different European instruments in an, efficient, in an efficient way. And what we would like now to do is to zoom in in uh, the experience of uh, the South uh, uh, Moravia region still in the Czech Republic, and particularly the experience of the Masaryk, uh, Masaryk University. Uh, and I'm turning to Martin Baresh, the rector of the university. We just heard from uh, Minister Dolisek about the importance of starting with a strategic vision 
uh, and create connection. But what is the reality on the ground? Uh, the university has been very, Euro University has been very successful in, uh, in working with the different funds and synergies. And as rector of this university and as an experienced uh, practitioner, what has been your motivation and experience in implementing uh, synergies in practice? What was the impact on the ecosystem of the Southern Moravian region? And what would you recommend to others? Rector. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a great opportunity to be here with you and to present our experience in this field. First of all, I would like to just comment what uh, we have uh, just heard from uh, Norman, that uh, we really appreciate the simplified approach or concept and uh, the simplified field of excellence uh, uh, and the support for widening uh, in the countries, our underdeveloped countries, uh, to be more active uh, in Horizon Europe. So that's great to hear and thank you for that. Uh, I would like to emphasize that the ability of the organization like uh, Masaryk University to set up uh, the long-term strategies goals in the area of research and developments and create both capacities, uh, capacities as well the uh, conditions for, uh, for their fulfillment. That's very important. And in recent years, uh, Masaryk University uh, has been able to create the environment uh, which enables the large uh, structural projects management, both uh, infrastructure and as well as the others and which is based fundamentally on the ability to create long-term strategic plans. This is very important and what was uh, missing here in previous uh, periods or decades. And uh, we need to include the predictions of the, uh, on the impacts on the ecosystem because we are part of the society, poor part of our city and so on. And uh, so to cooperate with the regional and national, uh, national authorities is very, very important. And especially, um, it's not only about the project, but about also open communication to, to discuss it uh, uh, among not only internally, but also with the external, uh, external bodies and other stakeholders outside the institution, not only regional, but governmental and private sector. What's our experience that you, EU structural funds enabled really, really massive investment in physical infrastructures and simultaneous inflow of researchers from abroad uh, and Masaryk University has managed to transform it into, I think, success story so far, uh, fulfilling the concept of long-term sustainability. The projects like CETEC, Central European Institute of Technology, or Resetox, uh, which is a research uh, center focusing on the research and the education in the area of environmental and health risk management, uh, associated with some chemical agents uh, around us. So th those are two very, I think, very visible, very visible examples, not only visible inside our university or at the national, but also definitely in, at the international level. And concept as well as the project targets are communicated clearly with uh, other uh, institutions in the region we have very open discussion with uh, at the national level, as I said before. Another example is simulation complex of Masaryk University, which is very unique project. Uh, I'm from the field, uh, from that field, medical field, so I can appreciate it and see it from the uh, different perspectives. It's a super modern simulation hospital and equipped with high-tech simulators, healthcare devices, 3D simulators, and so on, teaching models, in, uh, improving, enhancing the knowledge how to teach, how to learn, how to communicate, and actually 
it was a highly appreciated, uh, especially during the COVID situation, because we were hit hard uh, as a Czech Republic, Czech Republic by COVID, and the university were, were were closed, and this was very important for our students. But also other projects like uh, uh, widening schemes of Horizon 2020. Uh, era chair twinning and teaming uh, projects like ERC because they were none uh, like seven or eight goals here and now we are uh, getting more and more ERC projects uh, and this put Masaryk University in the seat number one uh, at the national level and with almost more than 120 projects from Horizon 2020. And uh, we, we were also successful in uh, European uh, University Associations uh, in that initiative. We are creating EDIC, EDIC um, uh, Digital University Consortium. So I think that during last, especially the last five years, we had really strong impact, not only on the uh, local, but as well as uh, national and international, uh, international level. And vice versa, it had very strong impact for the inside environment, like creating or re-establishing our internal grant schemes, how to evaluate the research, how to approach uh, what's the research, what's the real research. And uh, what would be my recommendation uh, to put everybody important to the uh, table, uh, have a clear and strong vision and mission and go for it. Just go for it. And uh, really, it's not only about the funding. It's also about the legislation and strong will to, to do it. So that's our uh, and one last point. Sometimes we have to choose, we have to focus. For instance, nowadays, great uh, deal is not only digital green deal, but also pharmacy, safety and resilience in the pharmaceutical industry. Thank you. Th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Baras. Thank you very much. Um, we have the time for uh, picking up a couple of questions that have been asked by uh, the people that are following us. Uh, and I uh, would start uh, maybe by asking uh, to, I'm turning to Signe, uh, the, the, one of the questions asked is what is the Commission doing to support the implementation of, of synergies? Uh, first of all, what I'd like to say that we've really listened to the stakeholders, to member states. We've created the legal possibilities uh, for the synergies to work. And when I listened carefully what the panelists uh, were saying today, it seems that we've been on the right track uh, because this is uh, really something which has been uh, appreciated. Uh, and these synergies are not only between Horizon Programme and cohesion uh, programmes, as we've discussed now, uh, but also, very importantly, uh, with the state aid general plan exemption regulation. So, first, the legal possibilities. Uh, but even if the law is there, in order, really, to, to make a difference, it's important that everybody knows how to implement that. And uh, creating a really awareness about it uh, is uh, also a very important task, which we've really taken seriously. So we've explained the new rules to member states, uh, to regional authorities, uh, to the beneficiaries, uh, very carefully on, on various occasions. And what now we are dealing with is also to prepare a guidance document so that everybody can also then uh, see more specifics how, namely, to implement these rules. Uh, then we will also continue to support the seal of excellence uh, by organizing a dedicated seal of excellence community of practice uh, for interested funding bodies. So that's also an additional possibility. And finally, uh, what we foresee is to create a permanent um, exchange forum on synergies for member states' authorities, both these who are following uh, the implementation of Horizon Europe programmes uh, and those who are uh, then implementing cohesion policy programmes. 
Thank you very much, Signe. Normand, a comment on it. Thanks, Nicola. Thank you, Signe. Obviously, I fully support everything what Signe said. Um, uh, I just want to stress that, of course, under cohesion policy, we will, we will keep supporting massively the further development and implementation of smart specialization strategies. You know very well we have uh, deployed an army of uh, different very high quality experts within regions. We have done the peer to peer reviews. Uh, we have tried to link the smart specialization strategies uh, better to our programming exercise, and we will continue doing that also in the future period. But I'm also particularly happy to refer to what Signa said this so, so called RIMA network. We will try to bridge the two worlds together, our managing authority with the uh, authorities responsible for uh, research and development. I think it uh, absolutely is important uh, to better use all these new legal possibilities as Signa referred to. We will also keep uh, uh, investing, as I said, uh, and uh, supporting and promoting the partnership principle. I think what we heard today is that Indeed, uh, the cooperation and the use of different instruments is possible, and uh, Professor Barish said it very clearly, his university is a good example, but it needs, uh, the dialogue needs to be pursued. So again, from our programs, from our technical assistance, we intend to support uh, more that uh, partnership between different levels of governance. Um, and, of course, we will be looking also um, at different pilots. As you know, we have had very important pilot projects to help, for example, regions in, that are in need of transition uh, under the Just Transition Fund. Uh, it wasn't mentioned yet today, but I'm, I'm sure you are discussing it because it's also linked to the innovation and research activities in those regions, I think. A lot. Um, so we will keep deploying different instruments, such as pilots, under our technical assistance, to support the better investment in this field of innovation and research. But we will also be asking, and it's true that we are also asking member states to better use the assistance that is available under the programs, because that is something where also beneficiaries can receive concrete support for project preparation and for capacity building. So we will keep, of course, doing that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are getting close to the end, but there is one question I would like to ask, in particular uh, uh, the, the minister. Uh, we, we, were, we have been talking about synergies between Horizon Europe and cohesion, but there is a big new kid on the block. And the question is, how do you see possible synergies with the recovery and resilience facility? Thank you for that question. That's a really important thing that we are now discussing. Uh, in Czech Republic, since we are in dialogue with Commission about uh, the, our proposal of the uh, resilience and uh, recovery uh, facility. We think that it's uh, extremely important to, uh, when financing research, and I will talk about research uh, in that matter, uh, to, to find a way how to complement uh, and to make the synergies, especially uh, with, for example, research infrastructures that have been already, already built using cohesion policy in, in teaming or, or in capital investment to, to research uh, infrastructures. And, and the, uh, we are aiming and the proposed uh, measures from our side is definitely uh, they go hand in hand uh, with that uh, synergical uh, approach. So uh, we are specializing in the, let's say, biomedical research. Uh, and joint uh, social science research, uh, social science research, which is connected to those fields, and we feel that it's uh, quite necessary for every member state to think about the this for these new facilities in the manner of what has been built using uh, cohesion policy or uh, EU framework programs in in the recent years. So, so definitely, this is something that we put a great focus on. And hopefully the implementation will bring another added value and, and uh, will be helping uh, bridging the innovation gap between European countries. Thank you very much, Minister. We have 30 seconds. I try to ask another question to uh, Mr. Clergeau, and is, uh, is a question about how to achieve strategic synergies between programs. We talk about instruments, but how can you build that strategic uh, connection? We can build it at European level if we are able to work together in a governance tool, Horizon Europe governance tool, but also a European research area.
governance tool. And ERA can be a good playground to coordinate our strategies and to define together a new path for public policies. And uh, ERA should not be only a playground for member states, but also for stakeholders and local and regional authorities. Uh, second element, ERA ups can be the good tool to make this coordination, this strategic planning at a regional level. And we have to work together very quickly about uh, ERA ups. And then uh, last point, if we have a guidance document, I hope it will be, it will come from DG Regio and DG RTD, just one guidance document. And if you could write it together with universities, with region and cities, with member states, it will be our common guidance document and it will be more efficient and more useful for every actors. Thank you. I think we got the message there. Uh, I, would like, I would like to thank uh, all of you, but I would like to close with uh, a rather difficult exercise, and is to ask you in, in really three words, three, a sentence, not more than that, your key advice for implementing successful synergies. And I will start with uh, uh, Dr. Baresh. Uh Three words, okay. Vision, internationalization, and people. Uh, that's definitely about it. And uh, we need to also work together uh, and put together research and education. We, uh, there is no research without the education Thank and you. simplification. Thank, Thank you. you. Minister, your three <laughs> words. Okay, uh, long-term planning, strategic approach, and maximum inclusion of as many stakeholders as you can because that's the way how this will uh, have the spillover effect and implementation will be successful. Thank you very much. Monsieur Clergeau. Working together, planning together, and co-design tools, strategies, and policies. Thank you, thank you very much. Normand, your turn. <laughs> It depends to whom I give advice, but without jokes, I fully agree. Uh, for me, it's one word, cooperation, because we have to work together and uh, get out of this silo of thinking, and then everything is possible. And now, Signe. Uh, well, uh, I'm afraid Norman stole my, <laughs> <laughs> my phrase, co-creation, <laughs> because I all say, but then, thumbs for co-creation. Co-creation. Uh, with everybody, with, uh, with everybody, putting, uh, bringing everybody on board, uh, co-creating and also then implementing together. Only then can we be successful. Signe, thank you very much. And thanks to you all for, for, this, uh, for this conversation. Uh, I would just uh, conclude by recalling that research and innovation are key driver uh, for the Europe post-pandemic recovery and, uh, and growth. Uh, as well as for the green and digital transition. And these are the core of the agenda of this commission. Uh, as we have discussed today, cohesion policy will provide a crucial, is a crucial opportunity right now in which you all are preparing your new programs to strengthen a research and innovation capacity and investment and synergies with Horizon Europe. And therefore, we really encourage uh, member states, regions to engage in a, in a debate with, uh, with the Commission on the implementation of these synergies uh, between Cohesion and Horizon Europe. And we, we heard you, uh, Monsieur Aclergeau, on the need to, to be consistent and coordinated also on our side. So thank you again. Thanks for the active participation of, of all those that listen to us. Um, there is a, a side event uh, in the village uh, at 12.30 on synergies implementation where we will present and discuss the new opportunities for synergies between cohesion policy and Horizon Europe. And with this, thank you again. Uh, stay safe and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.